and I guess it's worth a preaching. Joshua, Joshua chapter number six. Joshua chapter number six. How many of you were in church last Sunday night? You were in church last Sunday night, and uh, I got home from church, and my dad, uh, my, my dad, my uh, if my dad starts talking to me when I get home from church, <laughs> you guys let me go to bed, all right? And but uh, I got home from church, and my kid said to me, "Dad, you were walking on the you're walking on the chairs on the platform last night." I said, "Man, I was trying to get across Jordan, guys. Come on, you know." And uh, I, I just enjoyed the service. I enjoyed the liberty that we had. And I'm certainly appreciative of all the Lord's done here and how God has worked. I appreciate this study in Joshua. It's been a blessing to me personally. And uh, I, I'm just encouraged by it. And I hope that you'll be encouraged by it. Joshua chapter number 6 this evening. Joshua chapter number 6. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to read a few verses. There's a lot of passages and as many passages and scriptures that I want to read tonight, but I'm going to try to uh, just reference them this evening uh, so that uh, we'll move right along in the service, all right? The Bible says in verse number 1, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went in, uh, none went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear the ark, and the seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with, a loud, blow with the loud trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast for the ram's horns, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people out shall ascend up every man straight before him. The Bible says in verse number 2 of, of chapter number 6, God uses one word. He says, Joshua, see. You know, if we were able to see what God was going to do, it would require much less faith in our life, wouldn't it? Isn't it interesting sometimes how God asked something of us. The brother just shared his testimony just a moment ago. And, and God often sometimes puts his finger on our heart. And many times we're thinking, you know, Lord, you need to deal with this person. Lord, you need to deal with that person. And Lord, you need to speak to their heart. And God, they need to get right. And Lord, they really need this. But every once in a while, thank the Lord, God puts his finger on something in our heart. Amen. And God says, see. It's not what I am wanting to do with everyone else. It's not what God is wanting to do with everyone else. It's not what God is trying to accomplish through everyone else's life. What is God trying to do in your life? How is God trying to work in your life? We already know that Joshua and the children of Israel have seen God do great and mighty things. As a matter of fact, if you go back to chapter number 5 and you look in verse number 1, look what the Bible says. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until they were passed over, that their hearts melted, their hearts melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. God had already used the nation of Israel and God had already used Joshua to accomplish some great and mighty things. He had already, he had already allowed them to see his hand at work and to see him move miraculously. I'm thankful that God is still in the miracle working business. I believe that God can still work miraculously. I believe that God can still do great and mighty things within this place, within this church, if God's people would just get out of the way and see what God wants to do. Many times we need to pray, Lord, open open our eyes that we may see what uh, the, that we may see what the wondrous things that we may see what you can accomplish. Allow us to see God what you desire to see. And God had already seen, God had already envisioned. As a matter of fact, he had already proclaimed to the nation of Israel, I have a land for you. It belongs to you. It is yours. You're going to dwell there. And now God brings Joshua to this point and he says, see. God, see. And he says, Joshua, see. I've given thine hand, given, given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. I want to give you some things about our Lord tonight as we think about this word see. As we think about the things that we need to focus on as Christians as we think about the days ahead. 
God sometimes does things in reverse, doesn't He? When you look at this passage of Scripture, the, the natural tendency would be, all right, let's go to battle, let's defeat Jericho, and then God would say to us, see. But God, before they ever go into battle, says to the children of Israel, I've already delivered Jericho into your hands. You see the difference? The natural course is, hey, we're here, let's go to battle, let's fight the war, let's defeat the enemy, and, and look at everybody and say, see, God said we could do it. But God says, see what I'm going to do before it's ever done. See what I'm going to accomplish. Oh, allow our faith, keeping our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. See, I have given into thine hand the city of Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. The first thing I want you to see about the Lord Jesus Christ is that God's plan will always require faith. God's plan will always require faith. Are you with me this evening? God's plan will always require faith. Many times we often, or we, we desire to see the Lord work, but we don't possess the faith needed f to see Him work. Anything that God asks of us, anything that God desires of us, anything that God wants us to do will require faith. We need to understand that. Anything that God asks us to do, anything that God wants us to accomplish, anything that God sets before us is going to require faith. Amen. It doesn't happen without faith. You can't please God without faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But what is faith? It's keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ. Understand something, that God will never encourage you and God will never encourage me to keep our eyes on anything else other than Him. Do you understand that? God will never encourage us. He will never say, here, I want you to put your confidence in anything else. I want you to put your trust in anything else. God will never allow anything else to become the centerpiece or the focus of our life. God never desires that. Many times it happens in our life. But God will never desire for us to keep our eyes on anything other than Him. Right. And when we begin to look at things other than the Lord Jesus Christ, we begin to neglect to see what God desires to do and we begin to focus on the reasons that it cannot be done. Right. I'm so thankful in this passage of Scripture that Joshua didn't look at the Lord and say, now, now, now God, how are you going to do it? He, 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 God said, now see, Joshua, look what I'm about to do. And Joshua didn't say, well, I can't see anything. All I see is a great walled city. I see the, 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 the task ahead of us. God, I just don't know how we're going to do it. Joshua didn't say, Lord, I just don't think it can be done. God, Joshua didn't get his eyes on the walls. He didn't get his eyes on the enemy. He didn't get his eyes on the circumstances. He kept his eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christian, in your life, God will never lead you to focus on anything other than him. Amen. Now, when that happens in our life, we're headed towards defeat. Can you imagine this evening if the Lord said, See, I've delivered Jericho into your hands. I've delivered the king into your hands. I've delivered the mighty men of valor into your hands. And Joshua said, Thank you, Lord, I'll take it from here. Can you imagine if Joshua would have said that? Church, you and I, if we were honest this evening, could honestly say we've seen the Lord do great and mighty things. Amen. Hey, listen to me. There are churches across our country and churches that are meeting together tonight that, that would, would, would trade places quickly with what God has given us here. We've seen, and God is looking at us this evening and He's saying, See? See what I've done? See how I've accomplished it? See how I've worked? See how I've been faithful? See the, see the great and mighty things that have taken place? See all that I've done. Can you imagine us having that spirit and saying, well, Lord, thank you for bringing us this far, but we got it from here. Joshua would have found himself in a mess. Listen, there's a, there's a big difference. There's a big difference in going to battle alone rather than going to battle with Christ on your side. There's a big difference. And the Bible says that Joshua, as, as we often, as we think about it in our life, we've seen what God has done. But let me say something to you. God does not bring us to this point so that we can leave His will. God brings us to this point so that we can continue to trust Him. Anything that God asks of us will require faith. One of, the, one of the check marks, one of the benchmarks, so to speak, 
in our life, when we think about what God's will is and what God's direction is and how God wants to work, my question is this. Run everything through the filter of does it require faith? If it doesn't require faith, it's not God's plan. Let me say that again. If it doesn't require faith, it's not God's plan. Amen. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Does God want us to please Him? Let's try that again. Does God want us to please Him? Yes, He does. God says you can't do it without faith. You can't please me without faith. What is God's plan? What is God's will? What is God's direction? Does it require faith? If it doesn't, it's not God's plan. If we get to the point where we say, Lord, I've got this. We've got it covered. We've got everything taken care of. It's fine, God. We'll take it from here. We're getting out of the will of God. But when we get to this place and God says, see, and we say, Lord, I'm just going to have to trust you. Joshua hadn't fought the battle yet. The walls had not come down yet. No king and no enemy from Jericho had surrendered yet. So Joshua said, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. Anything that God asks of us requires faith. Anything that God says to us, this is what I desire of you, will require faith. It will require faith in your home. It will require faith in your family. It will require faith. It requires faith, Brother Riley, to say, hey, family, we're going to go to the mission field. That requires faith. It requires faith to say, you know what, Lord, I'm going I'm to give more so more missionaries can be supported. Lord, I'm going to be faithful to give to you even when, Lord, it seems like it, it just, I just don't know how it's going to be done. God, I'm going to trust you. I can't see it right now, God, but I'm going to trust you. Anything that God asks of us, God's plan always requires faith. See, God's plan always requires faith. Then the second thing that I want you to see, look down with me in verse number, in verse number 12. Man, there's so much in there. Look in verse number 12. Joshua chapter number 6. <clears throat> and Joshua rose early in the morning. Let me go back here before I get to that point. God gives Joshua the plan. He says, now here, here's, here's what's going to be done. By the way, God's not going to leave us out there to dry. All right? He says, Joshua, here's how it's going to be done. He says, for six days, you're going to march around one time. Uh, for six days. On the seventh day, he says, you're going to take, you're going to march around seventh time, you're going to blow the trumpet, everybody's going to shout, and the walls are going to come down, and you're going to go in. All right? So here we go in verse number 12. So Joshua therefore commanded the, uh, I'm sorry, verse number 12, I'm in verse number 17. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. The second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. They were obedient to the Lord. Uh, God, the obedience to the Lord always brings about the blessing of the Lord. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the, the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only at that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. And the city shall be accursed, even it, all that, are there, all that, are in, all that is therein. He said, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Now what happens? They shouted, and what happened? You know the story. The walls came tumbling down. Amen? Here's the second thing I want you to see about the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, number two, God always keeps His promises. Let me say that again. God always keeps His promises. What did He promise Joshua in verse number one? See, I have delivered into thine hand Jericho, the king, the mighty men of valor. He said, I've delivered into your hand. And here's the fulfillment of that promise in, in chapter number 6 in the latter part there. He says, I, I've seen. He said, I, I've delivered the city into your hand. And in, verse number, and in verse number 16, and it came to pass the seventh time the priest blew the trumpets and Joshua and the people shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Look in verse number 20. So the people shouted and the priest blew the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the what? The wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him. What does it say? And they took the city. The second thing we need to remember and we need to see about the Lord Jesus Christ is that God 
always keeps His promises. You see, let me say something to you. It's easy to stand up here and to say, hey, God is forever faithful. The Bible says the promises of the Lord are sure. Amen. Amen. They are tried. I'm thankful that they're sure. They're tried. They're settled. Hey, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall last forever. And it's easy to stand up and say, hey, hey, you can trust the promises of God. You can trust the promises of God. You can trust the promises of God. It's easy to get up and say those things. But friend, God did not just say to Joshua, he did not just say, trust me, he He said, I want you to see that I always keep my promises. He said, I don't want you to have to, in this instance, he said, you're not going to need any faith because I'm going to let you see it with your eyes that I always keep my promises. How many of you in this room tonight can say, you know what, there have been times in my life that the Lord has allowed me to see that he keeps his promises. There have been times in my life that the Lord has allowed me to see that he is always faithful, that God has allowed me to see that he will stand beside me through thick and thin, that God has allowed me to see that he'll direct my path in the storms of life God has allowed me to see that he is a God that cannot lie and will always keep his promises friend let me say something to you if God directs your life and if God leads your life don't you worry one bit about it because he said in Psalm 23 yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me he said thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When we take a step, friend, God takes a step. When we go through a dark time, God stands right there with us. When we face a difficulty, the Lord Jesus is standing right beside us. And he says to us, see, I always keep my promises. God keeps his promises. When God leads you, he'll take care of you. When God leads you, he'll supply. When God leads you, he'll meet the need. See. The Bible says that God said, I've already delivered the city into your hands in verse number one they hadn't even gone to battle yet and we find in the latter part of verse number 20 he says and they took the city God already knew what was going to take place you know what's scary we don't know what's going to happen the next minute our idea is that you know what we're going to go to church we're going to have a good time we're going to listen to the preaching of God's word be challenged convicted and praise the Lord hopefully get right with God and go on and serve the Lord tomorrow that's our plan but we're not promised the next moment but there have been times in our life when we couldn't see tomorrow that God has been faithful no matter what it brought when we couldn't see what was going to take place we have a God that's always there for us sometimes in the darkest moments of our life is the moment that we realize just how loving and gracious and merciful God is. God promised them, see, I've delivered the hands, delivered the city into thy hands. And in verse number 20, and they took the city. I'm thankful that God can deliver whatever God sees fit to deliver. God can deliver whatever God sees fit to deliver to the right address. There have been many of us there have been many times in our life that God, is, God has been poised and God has prepared the blessing, but because of our lack of faith, it got delivered to a different address. Well, I, I, would, hate to be, I would hate to be... You, the, the Bible says that the Lord came and he, he, brought, he, brought one, he brought three men. He brought one one talent. He brought one uh, two talents. And he brought one five. Remember that, remember that story? The Bible says that he went away and he came back and the, the one that had the one, or the one that had the two used it and made four and the one that had five used it and made ten. And he said the one that had the one, he said, all I've got is, I've just got this one thing, just one thing is all i got. That one thing is all I have. Hey, that, that message you preached on Thursday, are we willing to give the, the oil? The, 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 widow, the widow and her son said, I've only got just a little bit of oil and what did Elijah ask for? He said, he said make me something to eat first. And he said, I want the one thing that you've got. The Bible says he took that talent and he buried it in the ground. And when he came back, the Lord said, what would you do with what I gave you? And he pulled it out of the ground and he said, hey, I still have what you gave me. And what did God do? Did he go, oh, man, that's so great. I'm glad you had that one thing that I gave you. Is that what God intends for us to do with our life? To bury it in the ground and say, look, Lord, I've survived. Is that what God wants us to do? No, the Bible says the Lord took it from him and he gave it to somebody that would use it. I would hate to see God take the blessing intended for us and give it to somebody else because we took what we had been blessed with and buried it in the ground. 
and buried it in the ground thinking, man, when we arrive in heaven, isn't it going to be great? We'll be able to show the Lord our bank statement. You think God's going to be impressed with my bank statement, your bank statement, or anybody's bank statement? When he says, everything, all of it, already belongs to me. He says he put it in the ground, and what did God do? He took the blessing from us and gave it to somebody that would use it. Too many of us are burying our talents in the ground. By the way, God already knows what you have. How do you know God already knows what I have? Because he's the one that gave it to you. I remember being a kid growing up, and I'd say, Dad, I need five bucks. His famous line was, go ask your mom. <laughs> Today, I need five dollars. There have been times I would say, you know, I need five dollars, and maybe I had two dollars left over from the other five. And Dad would say something like, well, what'd you do with that other five I gave you? Yeah, we sometimes want to take the, what we've been given and think that somehow we, we've got it hidden from the Lord. God knows what we have. But I don't know. I, just don't, I don't know if I'm going to survive. I don't know if I can make it. I mean, Y3K is right around the corner. <laughs> I had to be prepared. We bury it in the ground, and God says, I had a blessing for you. Hey, why is it that it's so easy for us to trust the Lord with our eternity, but we can't trust Him on a day to day basis? God always keeps His promises. Amen. What did He say? Give, and it shall be given unto you. We like to use that verse when it talks about money, but listen, God, God, if you'll give God your life, He'll give it back to you in much better shape than it was when you gave it to Him. Amen. If you'll give God your life, you'll see Him bless it in yes. ways you could have never seen Him bless Amen. it. There have been things, I promise you, this missionary has seen, and missionaries that come all through this place all the time, they've seen God do in their life that they would have never seen had they not said, Lord, I'll give it to you, whatever you want. Amen. That's right. God always keeps His promises. Number three, and we'll be done. You guys ready to go home? Good, amen. I'm glad you're not. It's a long point. Look at look at with me, if you would, please, in verse number 22. The Bible says they go up, look in verse number 20, 20. They took the city. They utterly destroyed all that was in the city. Why did they do that? You go back a few verses and you know why, because God said to. He said it's a curse. Don't take anything. By the way, next week, you'll want to be here next week. You won't want to miss next week's lesson, the next week's message. He said don't take anything. He said it's a curse. As a matter of fact, if you hear Joshua, when he closes down the battle, man, he just tears the city of Jericho apart. I, I, won't, I won't take your time. But look, look at, I want to show you, verse number 26. i got to show you. And Joshua jured them at the time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. He said, I dare somebody to build on what God has destroyed. That's what he said. Look in verse number 22. And Joshua said unto the, unto the two men, I'm sorry, verse number 23. But Joshua, Joshua said unto the two men that spied out the country, Go in to the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels and the brass the iron, and, and it put it in the treasure of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab and the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Talk about, it, talk about a picture of salvation. The Bible says that Rahab was saved alive out of the fire. That's a blessing, amen? The third thing I want you to see will be encouraged is that not only, not only does God's plan always require faith, and not only does God always keep his, keep his promises. I like this one because it's very personal. God never forgets his people. Amen. You remember a few chapters before Rahab, the spies came in, they had a rerun. You ever watch reruns? There was a guy on TV called Rerun. That was Fat Albert's buddy, wasn't it? Y'all remember Rerun? Was it Rerun? Was it? Yeah, there it was. 
Amen. How many remember Fat Albert? He, he, he. Y'all remember him? Yeah. How many of you kids have never seen Fat Albert? You have no idea what I'm talking about. How many of you kids have never seen it? You guys got to go home. Get on YouTube. Show it. It'll show it there. Amen. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I'm going to have a good time. He, he, he. Yeah, that's it. Look at this. Just a few chapters ago, the Bible says they, they had a rerun. The two spies went in again. Remember, in, in Moses' day, they sent the, the spies in. and they spent. How, how many spies did they send in in Moses' day? Twelve, right? And two came back and said that uh, they could go in. Joshua and Caleb came back and said they could go in. The other ten said, it's just too big. I can't do it. Joshua says, I'm not even worried about the ten this time. I'm sending two in, all right? And they're coming back with the same message. They came back with the same message that, that the, the, the two spies that went into Moses' day came back in, but they needed a little help. King of Jericho got wind that there was somebody in the camp, in the city, and he sent somebody to find him. And what, what happened? A harlot by the name of Rahab came along, and she hid him and took care of him. Here's what she said, too. She said, I want you, they, they said, what can we do for you? She said, save me when you come into the city. Isn't it interesting? that a harlot already had the faith to believe God was going to take the city before God's people had the faith. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's bad when the world knows more about what God can do as opposed to His children. That's right. The Bible says that, 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 the, that the kings, the Amorites in chapter, in chapter 5, that the Amorites and the kings of the Canaanites, their hearts melted in them. There was no spirit in them to fight because they had seen and heard what God had already done. Isn't it interesting, isn't it convicting that many times that the world can challenge our faith in God? The Bible says that Rahab says, save my family whenever you come to the city. And the Bible says Joshua remembered her. You think it was Joshua that remembered her? Joshua was just the instrument that God used. He said, go get Rahab. Here's what Joshua said. Go get Rahab. Listen, look at it now. I like this part. This is good stuff. Stay with me. You guys there with me? Joshua said to the two men that spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath. How many of you ever, anyone ever had a fire in their home? Anyone ever had a fire in their home? I had a fire in my apartment one time. I won't go into that story. I'm already in trouble for this morning's story I shared with you. So I want to share that story. I remember one time when I was young, though, we lived right off of Kelly Davis Road, the first house my parents ever lived in when we had moved to Richmond Hill. And um, I remember it was a Saturday morning. My mom's not here, so I can make it good. Uh, Saturday morning. And uh, my mom was going to make breakfast, and she made breakfast. And she had gotten up early, and so it was Saturday morning, so I didn't know early existed on Saturday morning. And so I was in bed, and I remember... I remember being asleep, and, and it just began to, to fade into uh, my hearing. It began to just kind of slowly fade into my hearing. And I, it got louder, and I'm kind of awake. I open one eye, the other eye, and smoke everywhere. It was smoke. And, man, I thought, man, of course, I was young then, and uh, a, a, a young guy, and it wasn't experienced, and so... The, the thing I was thinking was, man, I'm about to die. My house is on fire. We're about to die. You know, everything smoke. You know, Lord, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. You know, I knew I was saved, so I wasn't worried about the other option, you know. And so the house is on fire, and I'm laying in the bed there, and I'm waking up, and I remember my dad crawling in the room. He was crawling on all fours into the room, and he reached his hand up over the bed, and he was beating on me, trying to get me to wake up, which was a normal thing, you know. It was no, no big deal. Of course, my sister, she had been taken out. You know, the animals had been taken out. You know, they'd gotten, gotten important pictures, and, 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 you know, other family members were fine. They had called the neighbors and let everyone know they're okay. And all of a sudden, they said, oh, we got Brian inside. We need to go get him. And so here they come crawling in there. My dad's waking me up, and he gets me outside, and they're smoking the house, and it was just a simple grease fire is all it was, but sounded a lot worse, didn't it? <laughs> if you've ever been in a fire, you know what? If, if, things, are, if things are bad, you, you, you don't go in and go, uh, let's see, what am I going to take? Do I like that dress? No. I like that? Nah. Those shoes? Yes, get those shoes. Yes. That's my wife telling me, get those shoes. No, no not that. That's your stuff. Get, get mine. <laughs> you don't do that, do you? 
When there's a fire, what are you doing? You're worried about one thing, right? Getting out. Getting out. Hey, this is good. When God redeems us, He just don't redeem the good parts of us. By the way, there, there aren't many good parts. Amen. Amen. There are not many good parts. When God redeems us, when God sends the gospel in to evacuate the premises of the fire, the Bible says that God saved all that we had. Amen? Amen. When I got saved, I didn't get partly saved. I didn't some of me get saved. When I got born did again, did it my my from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, God redeemed all that I had. When the Bible says that they went in to get Rahab the harlot, they didn't stop with just part of what she had. They didn't just say, Hey, let's hurry up and get out of here. Joshua gave specific orders. He said, You go get her, and when you get her, you get everything that she's got. Look at this, friend. The Bible says just a few verses down. Look at it in verse uh, look at look at it, look at it again in Joshua chapter number 6. The Bible says and the young men that were spies in went in and brought out Rahab, listen to me and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. Not only because of Rahab's wisdom and Rahab's faithfulness to trust the Lord Jesus Christ did God redeem her life but the Bible says that she went in and he, she said to her she said to those kindred and all those people amen how many of you got family that you love but you don't necessarily like how many you know what I'm talking about amen she went and got them all she said and she said now listen I know you're not going to believe it but in just a little while there's going to come a knock at the door and it's not going to be uh, the local uh, businessman or the local business owner. He said it's going to be somebody, and one of the mighty men of valor from the nation of Israel. She said, when that knock comes, you guys better be at my house. You better be gathered together because when they come, we're loading up and we're getting out of here. Amen? I'm so thankful that one day, hey, friend, there's going to come a spiritual knock at the door, so to speak. And the trumpet's going to sound. And all that we know, all of us that know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we're getting out of here. Amen? We're not going to have to worry about the battle anymore we're not going to have to worry what's going to be taking place hey and friend by the way we're not going to stand without the camp of Israel amen we're going to be standing on the inside we're going to be standing next to Jesus Christ we're going to be with the Lord Jesus for all of eternity but not only did Rahab get to go but because of her witness all that she had went with her my question is this who's going because of you you say pastor that's not the way it works remember when Lot was in Sodom you know why Lot was taken out of Sodom? Well, Lot was one of God's children. Lot was a saved man. Amen. You know why Lot was taken out of Sodom? It wasn't because of Lot. You know what the Lord said? God remembered Abraham. God remembered Abraham. And because God, because Abraham was faithful to witness and faithful to be an example and faithful to, to share the truth, because of that, Lot was redeemed. You know, the sad thing is that in many of our lives, in many of our lives, we're, we're okay. We're fine. Hey, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. No doubt, I'm on my way to heaven. But I wonder who's going with me. I wonder who's coming with me. I wonder how many aunts and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews and sons and daughter and uh, wife and family. I wonder who's coming with me. Because I was faithful to warn them that there was coming a day when the Lord would show up. You see, when, when we look at society today and the culture we live in, boy, it's dark, isn't it? I want to encourage you, Christian. God hadn't forgotten where we are. God hadn't forgotten us. God never forgets his people. Rahab stood there. You know what God said to her? You know what Joshua said to her? You know what the Lord said to her? He said, see, I told you I'd bring you out. I told you you'd be all right. I told you that in the day that we came, you'd be delivered. See? God's plan always requires faith. God always keeps his promises. And God never forgets his people. I'm glad I'm on the Lord's side. Are you? Let's pray. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your truth. And Lord, I pray that we 
always remember your faithful God. Help us to see, Lord, what you desire for us to see. Help our church to see that, God, it's going to require faith, whatever you ask us. It's going to require faith. So, God, help us to trust your promises because you always keep them. And Lord, you know right where we are. We seem overwhelmed. God, you will deliver us. Thank you, Lord, that you care for us. I thank you, God, that you've given us another day. May we use it for your honor and glory. Our heads are bowed.